Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. And on behalf of Alderman Joan Reno of the First Ward, Scott Wagstaff of the 32nd, Michelle Smith of the 43rd, Tom Tunney of the 44th, and Amaya Pilar of the 47th Ward, we're delighted you could be here this evening. We are also pleased to have with us this evening State Representative Ann Williams, and of course, Chicago's brand new Superintendent, Carrie McCarthy. Before we begin, we'd also like to thank Dr. Lilith Werner, the principal here at Lakeview High School, and Michael Cox, the assistant principal. And we'd also like to extend a warm welcome to Commanders Kenny and Bomer here tonight, and also Deputy Brian, excuse me, Deputy Superintendent Brian Murphy. A warm welcome to everyone. My name is Brian Daly. It's my privilege to serve as moderator this evening. I'm a former president of Roscoe Village Neighbors. I co-chair the Public Affairs Forum at the Union League Club of Chicago. Through the miracle of Ward Remaps, I have alternately lived in the 32nd and the 47th Ward, although I've never had to move from my house. And also, I am proud to say I'm a descendant of many a long line of police officers, including grandfather, uncle, brother, and sister-in-law. So believe me when I say that the issues we're discussing this evening are as near and dear to my heart as they are to everyone here this evening. Uh, let's all stipulate to a few things. First, we have exactly 90 minutes this evening in which to cover an awful lot of territory. So we're going to streamline this as much as possible to minimize the superfluous. It goes without saying that all five aldermen and Superintendent McCarthy are eager to share their facts, to hear our thoughts, to know our concerns, and listen to your questions to the extent possible. We're also eager to assuage our concerns. Uh, let's also stipulate that no one likes budget cuts. But the U.S. economy remains abysmal, the city is insolvent, and so cuts must come. Therefore, the fundamental question is what cuts are going to have the least adverse effect on our quality of life here in Chicago. Our format this evening is simple and straightforward. Each old man will take up to three minutes to make an opening statement, then Superintendent McCarthy will make his remarks. When he concludes, I'll begin asking questions. We've received a number of them this evening. Some are redundant. We'll consolidate them as much as possible so that we can answer as many different questions as possible. If you do have a question this evening, please write it down on any of the sheets of note paper here. There are pens up front. Hold them up, and one of the aides from the Romantic office will retrieve them and bring them up this evening. With that, we're going to draw the program to a close at 8.30. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let us begin. Alden Marina, uh, Alden Bar, we'll begin with you. Thank you. Good evening. I uh, want to welcome all of you here tonight. Uh, I want to also thank Thank you, High School, for hosting us here tonight. I'd like to thank the superintendent and his team. And I'd also like to thank my colleagues on the city council for being here tonight. Uh, welcome to the 47th Ward for those of you that are uh, from outside the ward. I, we're here tonight to talk about some difficult decisions. Um, but I think when you look at the city structural deficit, you're talking about a $636 million shortfall of that. $417 million is being addressed on the cost side. And not every one of those $417 million is a cut. Some of those are efficiencies. And what we're here to talk about tonight is one of those efficiencies. There are some changes, and, and I know that change is sometimes difficult to deal with, and I know sometimes it's not easy. But the fact is we are at a point City's at a critical tipping point where either we can continue doing things the same way and resort to using band-aids and parking meters and selling off assets, or we can make the structural changes that we need to make in order in order 
to make the city sustainable from a service perspective, but also the fact that the city survives. There's a long history from around the country of cities that have uh, faced structural deficits and have refused to make difficult decisions and in, instead make politically expedient decisions and kick the can down the road. Detroit, the Pittsburghs, the Philadelphias, all of these cities failed to take action and rather than hit the brakes, they hit the gas pedal and went forward. And they had to make draconian cuts at the end of the day. And we all know what happens when cities have to make those. Detroit has had a 40 year history. They're still trying to climb up. So here we are today, on, on the eve of making a difficult budget decision. But tonight we're here to talk about a, an efficiency. So as it relates to the 47th Ward, one of the things that I've been assured in conversations that I've had with Mayor Emanuel and with the brass of the police department is that while we are shifting and there is a consolidation of districts, that we will see more police officers on our streets in the 47th Ward. We've been assured of that. And the other thing that we've been assured of is that there will be a, a, a larger discussion about a community liaison. We had that conversation with the North Center Neighborhood Association. They put that proposal forward, and that is something that we're going to continue to address once the budget passes and work on next year. So let's keep this conversation going tonight. I know that it's not easy, but I thank all of you for being here. This is, in this ward, the third conversation we're having regarding the change with the police. So um, thank all of you for your participation, for your commitment, and uh, let's have a great time tonight, and let's have a, a, a good conversation. Thank you very much. Um, I'll be very, very short. Um, I appreciate everyone coming tonight. I really want to hear from the superintendent, as you do. Um, I'm Alderman Scott Wagspack, and uh, as Alderman Poir said, we have a big budget vote tomorrow. It's one of the more difficult ones I think I've seen in the last few years that I've been in office. Uh, what happens with the police districts is part of that budget, so um, we want to try to get as much information out as possible. We appreciate all of your questions, and hopefully um, we're able to answer all of your questions that you'll have tonight for the superintendent. So thank you all for coming. Good evening, I'm Alderman Michelle Smith from the 43rd Ward. As a former federal prosecutor, my top priority is making sure that we keep our ward constituents safe. And I am very excited to provide to you the opportunity to hear from our new police superintendent who has so impressed so many of us in city council. Just like any other department of our city, the police department needs good and firm and smart management. And I am really excited about the opportunity uh, that you'll have to hear from our new superintendent about some of the management initiatives that are being, uh, that are being initiated. The Better Government Association estimated a year ago that they believe that 10% of our city's budget could be saved if we created more efficient processes, eliminated fraud, waste, and corruption. Well, our first city budget cut $400 million, not quite 10%, and a first effort at trying to make our government work better. Not every single one of those cuts is great cuts, but I support many, many, many of them. And one of them is this measure to make our police department behave and be even more efficient. So I look forward to hearing more about what the detailed plans are for the consolidation of these two districts and, and count on having all of our questions answered tonight. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Tom Sonny from the 44th Ward. And uh, I wanted to echo some of the comments I made in the brief of what my colleagues have said. This is uh, you know, uncharted territories as far as what cities are required to do with fewer and fewer resources coming in and it's kind of a vicious cycle about, about where the economy is going, as you know where the real estate economy is going and how do we fund our schools, libraries, and of course public safety. But in this budget, it's the first time we've asked uh, the police department to really think about how they can do more with less. And I know we're going to hear uh, from the superintendent about that. Um, we've also been hearing since the day he was hired about how do we bring 
more uh, police officers from behind the desk and out into the streets. So as some of my colleagues have said, uh, a headquarters is only one thing. The more, the more police you have on the street, the more they're working for us. Um, I do want to mention uh, the fact that uh, we have been blessed uh, with the, the new, whatever number we're going to call it, the 23rd District Station at, at Addison Halstead, which I think is going to serve this entire uh, district uh, more efficiently uh, than certainly what was happening there at Addison and Halstead. Uh, I do want to make sure that um, we get the police officers out on the streets at the time that we think are most needed. In my, in my district, in my ward, it is specifically um, around Cup Games, certainly on the first shift, which I always thought was the third shift, but basically the midnight to five shift. Um, and I know that we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about this, we're gonna continue the conversation about that. Um, and the increase of property crimes and, and, and break, car break-in uh, cars the crimes that we've seen. So I look forward to hearing from you, from our constituents, um, about how we can do more with less because that is the foreseeable future, not just in, not just in this year's budget, but um, in the many years to come, I believe so. And I think the mayor ran on, a, on an effort to really try to rein in um, some of our costs um, down the road. And I know this is a first step and there will be will be, I think, more austere budgets moving forward. So um, I look forward to hearing from the superintendent again. I think he's a charismatic individual. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you and, and the uh, interface with the superintendent. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. Um, I'm Gary McCarthy. Uh, tomorrow is my six month anniversary, uh, and I'm, I'm really proud to be here. Um, I, I want to start by, by kind of following up on a couple of things that, that you heard some of your elected officials already say. In that change comes hard. I, I recently heard uh, a phrase which I think I'm going to adopt that there's two things that people don't like the way things are and change. Um, I, I really like that. I'm not sure if it's appropriate here, but I just really like to say it. And from, you know, giving the Chicago police a, a fresh set of eyes, if you will, uh, I believe is going to serve us very, very well. From the time I walked through the door, I've been looking at where everybody is, what it is that they're doing, and whether or not it really serves the mission of the Chicago Police Department, which is to reduce crime and provide services to the public. <clears throat> a couple of the initial moves that we made, and I'm sure you've already heard about most of these, is disbanding citywide units and putting those resources into the hands of your commanders, Commanders Kenny and, and Bomber, in this case, and the district commanders across the city. We took about 500 cops out from behind desks and put them out on the street because that's what they were hired to do. They were hired to be police officers. They weren't hired to be clerks. So that results in about a thousand more police officers going into patrol districts, which represents a shift in philosophy for the Chicago Police Department. And for my tenure here as superintendent, you're going to hear a couple of phrases over and over again. You're going to hear about the push down of authority and accountability. And the commanders are probably tired of hearing about it because there's a lot of accountability that goes along with the authority of giving them the resources to reduce crime. So that's one thing that you're going to hear a lot of. Another thing that you're going to hear a lot of is systems management. Policing has kind of changed. We're not the hierarchical, paramilitary, slow-moving organizations that we used to be, certainly when my father was a police officer. We're more business-like now. We measure things, we measure inputs, we measure outputs, we come up with solutions. We don't just respond to something that happened. We, we try and prevent crime, you've heard us talk about that. So, looking at the structure 
of the Chicago Police Department, the first thing I started at the top of the department. And if you ever saw, and, and I think some of the some of the council folks have, have actually seen this, the organizational chart that the Chicago Police Department had on, on May 16th when we walked in the door, it reminded me of the periodic chart in high school chemistry. And, and I still can't find chromium or aluminum on that, but they, they might have actually been in there. The point is, it wasn't structured, right? It was kind of like flattened out and then, you know, it didn't make sense. So Brian, Brian Murphy uh, was referred to as deputy superintendent, and he's one of the fro folks who's already taken a hit in that we eliminated the position of deputy superintendent. We eliminated the two positions of assistant superintendent because I'm going to speak out of school here, I know nobody's going to repeat this, but I think that some of that structure was political in nature in how it grew to be what it was. So, Brian uh, B. Quello and uh, Ernie Brown and uh, Deb Kirby, who is still here, uh, Steve Pierce, who retired, uh, were demoted to chief. So now you have a structure with the superintendent, the first deputy superintendent, and then six chiefs responding up, and each one of them heads up a bureau, cleaning out the club, being more business like, flattening out the organization. Which brings us to what we're here tonight that everybody wants to talk about. The key question is, and the mayor asked me this over and over again, is would we want to do what we're doing if there was no financial impact? And my answer quite consistently was yes. Because as I told you, we look at measurements, we look at what's going on, and I'm going to give you a couple, okay? And please bear with me, because this may sound complicated, but it's kind of simple. Everybody's been talking about the fact that we're down police officers. And I always challenge people and I say, well, explain to me what we're down from. And they say, well, we're down 1,000 cops, or we're down 1,400, 1,200, whatever the number happens to be. And I say, well, somebody tell me, what analysis can anybody provide that says that that's the right size of the Chicago Police Department? Is it based upon population? Is it based upon geography? Is it based upon crime? Is it based upon calls for service? What metrics, what study was done that says if you have this amount of work, you need this amount of policemen? And nobody can answer it. And the reason is because it was never done. And the answer becomes, well, that's what was budgeted. So at the end of the day, in looking at creating efficiencies in the department, in looking at ways to deliver services, in ways to be more business-like, using business models, which is what we use to reduce crime, putting the authority and the accountability in the district commander's hands, and then holding them accountable for what's happening. By the way, the, the, the other, we have a method by which we hold the commanders accountable. It's called CompStat. And CompStat is a very simple four-step process to reduce crime. Business management principles, looking at what's going on, asking for the solutions, and then looking at how you did. If it works, do more. If it doesn't work, do something different. Looking at time of day, day of week, method of entry, method of robbery, how many, how many offenders, right? All of those metrics that we talk about in police work. So all of those things are coming together at the same time. Now, what we're going to uh, uh, talk about tonight is the restructuring that, that we've put before the council. And it's important to realize that this is only one component of it. Right now, the city of Chicago has 25 police districts. And those 25 police districts are divided into five overhead area commands. So you have your commanders who, who run the districts, they report to deputy chiefs. There's five districts in each one of the commands, well, more or less. We're going to three area commands. We're going to north, we're going to central, and we're going to south. Within that, we create systems efficiencies in the delivery of services and 
we free up police officers who are doing administrative functions to do patrol work. That's one thing that we're doing. We're doing that with patrol, we're doing it with detectives. The second thing that we're doing is we're consolidating six districts into three. Now here, in the 19th and the 23rd district, I'm going to give you the metrics that we looked at as to whether or not we wanted to do this. And I'm going to give you just a couple of quick ones. We're going to talk about square miles, in other words, geography, size of the districts. We're going to talk about crime, right, the amount of reported crime that we have to deal with. We're going to talk about calls for service. And then we're going to talk about the number of police officers assigned to the districts. Kind of sounds like the right things to, to discuss. So, if you take, before consolidation, the square mileage of the 19th district, it's 5.6 square miles. It ranks 15th out of 25 police districts, right? From, from biggest to smallest, 15 out of 25. The 23rd district is three square miles, and it ranks last, it's 25th out of 25 police districts. Now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give you the befores and then I'll give you the afters. All crime incidents. The 19th ranks 20th out of 25. The 23rd ranks 24th out of 25. Okay, they're at the lower end of the spectrum. Calls for service. The 19th ranks 19th out of 25. And the 23rd ranks 22nd out of 25. Total number of officers assigned to the districts. The 19th ranks 19th of 25, and the 23rd ranks 25th. Least number of police officers in the city. When you combine and consolidate those two districts, this is and now, now we're judging them on 22 districts, right? Because we're consolidating six into three. By square miles, in other words, geography cover. Before, it was 15 out of 25 and 25 out of 25. After, it ranks 10 of 22, kind of in the middle of the pack. By all crime incidents, ranks 20 out of 25 and 24 out of 25. Before, after, ranks 12 out of 22. So you got geography, crime incidents. Calls for service. Before it ranks 19th of 25 and 22 out of 25. After it ranks 10 out of 22. Those are the three metrics that I gave you. There's one more. By number of police officers assigned, it ranks third out of 22. By consolidating the two districts, we're taking two districts that are in the lower band of all of those metrics that I gave geography, crime, calls for service, and number of officers assigned. Consolidating them, you create three mid-level districts. I'm sorry, I created one here. That's what we're talking about, just this one. You create a mid-level district for crime, geography, and calls for service, and you have the third most police officers in the city. Each consolidation frees up about 20 police officers that were otherwise doing administrative functions within the district. And the other thing, while we have emotional attachments, while we're accustomed to the way things are, while we like our, our district buildings to be on a certain place in a certain block, the point is that building does not provide the protection. It might provide a comfort zone, I understand that. But what it doesn't provide is police officers. The police officers on the street is what stops crime from happening. Not just having them out there, but having them do the right things at the right places at the right times, which is what we hold the commanders accountable for doing. So that, in essence, is, is I guess, my opener. Um, this is what we've been doing since we got here. Uh, it would be easy to say, give me 2,000 more police officers and I could get it done. But I don't think that that's the right thing to do. I think the first thing that we have to do 
is figure out the best ways to use the resources that are at our fingertips right now, especially in these tough economic times. When we did the consolidation at the top of the department, where we knocked out the assistant superintendents and the deputy superintendents' positions, that was reported in the press as a cost-cutting measure to save a million dollars. That was not the goal. The goal was to structure the department in a fashion that we could quickly communicate up and down the lines of the department to ensure that we're managing our department. It's the same issue here. There also happens to be cost savings in these consolidations. And that's the reason why I understood is what it boils down to. I'm looking at the best method to reduce crime and deliver services to the public. Thank you, Superintendent, and uh, we're working on the microphone, so we'll just uh, move on. Exactly. Uh, we've received a number of questions tonight. Thank you very much for all of them. They're very thoughtful, and again, we're going to consolidate and try to get through as many as possible. First question, how many officers are currently on the streets in the 19th and 23rd districts? How many officers will be on the streets in the new 23rd district post-consolidation? And how many officers will be on the new streets in the new 23rd district one year from now? Okay, so, just so, a oh, wait a Now, let's draw a distinction so everybody understands. When we talk about the total number of officers assigned to a district, that's all the police officers assigned to. There are about 20 officers doing administrative functions within that program, right? And they're counted in that total number. So what will happen is, the 19, right now, has 218 police officers, total complement of 252 members. In other words, sergeants, lieutenants, captains, and, and the district commander. The 23rd has 183 police officers and 215 total. Okay? So within those two figures are 40 officers that are doing uh, administrative functions as we speak. The combined numbers would result in 401 police officers, 459 total sworn. Now, I know that the, the concern that I hear frequently is, okay, so does that mean now that we're going to take the cops and move them someplace else? And the answer is no. The answer is no. Um, this has been a raging debate in the city, and, you know, this is only one part of, of the equation. Because now that the newly consolidated 19th and 23rd districts are going to have X number of police officers, it's other parts of the city that say, well, they don't have the same crime. So we want those cops in our communities. But we've already managed to redistribute the officers in such a fashion by taking them out of those task forces. The first eight districts that got police officers were those super high districts as far as crime goes. Then what we did was the rest of them that we distributed, we made sure everybody got some, because I'm not willing to push down on a balloon. I don't want to push down here and have it pop up here. So our commitment is to keeping the cops where they are. Additionally, I always get this question, and I anticipate it's going to come up, is if the officers who are on a certain beat in 19 right now, are they going to stay there? The answer is yes. Okay, my vision of community policing, which is what the commanders will carry out, because we still are a paramilitary organization, is keeping the same cops on the same beat every single day for a number of reasons. The first one is accountability, right? You heard me talk about the push down of authority and accountability. Well, it doesn't stop with the district commanders. 
It goes right through the, the captains, into the lieutenants, the sergeants, and the cops. But if the cops don't have anything that they're accountable for, if they're just chasing the radio because there's not enough police officers in the district, then they're not, they're not doing their jobs. So that's number one. Number two is they get to know the people who live there. They get to know the good kids from the bad kids who happen to hang out on different corners opposite each other. They get to know the places where the conditions exist that need addressing. The same things all the time, right? So if we've got cops running around from place to place to place, they can't be familiar with them. So the commitment is to keep the cops where they are. Now, how many cops do we have a year from now? We can do predictions on, on how many people are eligible to retire. Um, that's not an exact science. But what I can tell you is that we're not going to take your cops and put them someplace else, which I think is really the basis of that. I can't predict the future, so I can't tell you how many are going to be here in a year. I'm hoping that I'm here in another year. I hope I'm here in another seven years, quite frankly. So um, that's my commitment. Superintendent, we received word from uh, sources within the FOP that beat maps have been redrawn and that as part of it, the, ninth, the new 23rd will be down 15 officers and three sergeants. Can you comment on that? I, I don't know how that map comes about. So I, I don't know where that information is coming from. The math flies in the face of that. If there's attrition going on, they, listen, we, we also have not gotten to the point. We're looking at, um, within this consolidation, we're creating new positions, okay? So there will be no demotions of exempt ranks, in other words, people above the rank of lieutenant. But what will happen is we're creating, if, if Commander Kennedy's on vacation or, or sick, Commander Palmer's really running his shop and babysitting. That doesn't make any sense when you're talking about accountability. So we're creating a position of executive officer across the department. Everybody needs a number two. I have a number two. I have the first deputy superintendent. So I don't know where those numbers are coming from, and we're going to be down people and, and redrawing beat maps. Beat maps are going to take a long time to look at. That's not done yet. Following up on that, what is the deadline for completing the beat maps? And will there be input from the community and from the own offices in the redrawing of those beat maps? Well, we don't have a deadline. Right, right now, what we're going to do is you're going to take 19 and 23 in whole, in mass, the way they are. So there's, there's no redrawing of beats within that. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, uh, consolidations down, down south. First district will pick up a little bit of, of the, the uh, 21st district. But, you know, those beats right now are staying whole. And then, as far as re redrawing, that's a whole separate project that I'm not even thinking about yet. We'll be monitoring it, no doubt, I'm sure. Uh, what will the effect of the consolidation be on the response times for 911 emergency calls? It, it should, well, we're working on response time in a whole different fashion. Um, our response time is a result of a couple of issues. And I, and I always like to use the analogy that you can only put five pounds in a five pound bag. You can't put ten pounds in that bag. So we have a system that is not designed to do what it is we want it to do. We have too many calls for service coming in. And we didn't have enough cops in the district. So the first thing that, that the mayor and I did was make sure that we got the cops into the districts. So even if the guys and gals who were doing great police work in, in TRU and, and in Mobile Strike Force were on the street, they weren't handling calls for service like somebody in a beat car would. So redistributing those officers into the beats is the first thing that we did. Now, a longer term project, and I'm going to have to make some policy decisions on this, and this is something that people are not going to be happy about. We handle too many calls for service. We handle too many calls for service. And I can give you examples, and you're going to laugh. 
My children are fighting over the, room, over the remote control. My 13-year-old daughter refuses to go to school. My son won't eat. These are real calls for service that we respond to based on the protocols that we have right now. And we have to handle them because they're considered family disputes, which could end up in some sort of violent encounter. It doesn't make sense. You know, uh, I think it was Walter Matani said that we're in a position where we have to do more with less. I, I've kind of flipped that a little bit. I don't think we're in a position where we want to do more with less. I think what we want to do is we want to do less and do it better so it has a greater impact on what we're trying to do. Because if you're doing everything all the time, you're not going to get anything done. So I really think that this boils down to setting up the department in such a fashion that we deliver the services that we know will have the greatest impact on what it is we need to do as a police department, which is not get the remote control from somebody's son to give it to the daughter. Is it correct to say that that's really a reprioritization of the handling and sorting of calls within the 911 emergency center and that the calls that are actually passed on to the units, the patrol units, are more specific, more appropriate for what we all think of police uh, resources being dedicated to. So that, that would be appropriate. So that if we go back to one of your first statements when you uh, took the position, it was uh, to focus on the broken window uh, theory, which 